you're a current tattoo artist, because basically this is for Skin Art Magazine. Okay. We're trying to... I have three, is that? Oh yeah, name them all. Ashley McMullen, my girlfriend. Uh, Dustin Haran, and Dan Belcher. And out of, out of Ashley works out of True Tattoo in Clifton Park, New York, and Dan and Dustin uh, own and operate the Dead Presidents Lounge in Albany, New York. Uh, I get tattooed by Jeremy McIntosh at Pygmalion Tattoo in Greenfield, Massachusetts. And I, uh, I get tattooed by Andy Barrett. I don't know the name of the shop, but it's a Chicopee Mass. Sweet. It's new. It's new. <laughs> And um, why do you uh, reject the label of deathcore, and why do you think you have been categorized in that genre of music? Uh, I feel like we're cattle categorized that way because uh, people need to label things. You know, people need to say, well, this is this kind of music and this is this kind of music. We don't really fit with anything. I mean, we, if we tour with hardcore bands, we're a metal band, and if we tour with metal bands, we're the hardcore band. So it's like. People don't know what to call us, so they just call us deathcore because that's the that's the new that's the new thing these days. And, and uh, I I don't like I don't like being called deathcore, but I don't like when anybody's being anybody's called deathcore because I just think it's a silly it's a silly name. Death metal and hardcore. Like if you're gonna call them deathcore, I might as well just call them just death metal, I guess. Hardcore influenced death metal, or a bunch of wiggers playing death metal. I mean, I don't know what, I don't know. Deathcore is just so, it's just a stupid, it's just stupid to me. Right. And uh, I, th I just think k is a metal, metal core band, which is also stupid, but what, uh, whatever, <laughs> I guess. Definitely like that answer. Thank you. <laughs> uh, do you guys prefer to play large venues or small venues? It depends on the day. Yeah, it depends. I mean, I like playing large venues because normally when we play large venues, we're playing in front of a new crowd. You know, and it's it's big and it's open and there's a bunch of kids that, like on this tour, like all the vendors are huge and it's it's filled they're filled with kids that they don't really know who we are and they're here to see Under Oath or they're here to see As They Die and they're like, well, well, what's this band all about? And they're getting to see us in a setting where they they normally never get to see us at all because they would just wouldn't come to see us. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I like playing small minis because they're so intimate, intimate and personal, and that's the kind of band we are, like a personal band, like we like. Having the crowd involved, and like getting kids to stage dive, and I like, you know, grabbing kids around the head and just choking them, and and uh, you know, jumping off the. St I like to stage dive myself during our set, and like, it feels better because it feels like everyone is actually, as opposed to this where everyone's like, just staring at you, <laughs> thirty feet away behind a barricade. Smaller venues, everyone's like, ah, you know, they're right in your face, and, and you know, you can tell they're having a good time. Right. So that's more energy. And uh, do, you, do you have any crazy fan stories? Oh, I got a ton of those. I just got a single a couple out, I guess. Uh, you guys try to like what are the most craziest fan you've had so far? Most of our crazy fans end up becoming our friends. Yeah. Yeah, no way. So what do you want? <laughs> most of our crazy fans end up becoming our friends, and it's too late. Before we were, like, they're already our friends, and it's too late to realize that they're crazy. And because they're just around all the time. So they're just like, oh, yeah, they bring us food, and like, yeah, that's cool. And then they're like, I love you. Yeah. We're yeah. best friends. And they have your phone number, and they always text you, and it's just like, <laughs> I don't know. Crazy fans. That's the craziest fan story. The craziest the fans are friends. Are the <laughs> fans that become yeah. friends, and we wish we were never friends with them, so. set up until like April or May of 2011 um, but I mean 
Who knows what the future holds? I could die tomorrow. Who knows what? Oh, hopefully not. All the plans <laughs> go crashing down. No, hopefully not. But um, just gonna keep doing what we're doing. You know, it's, it's all we can do. You can I, keep asking questions if you want. There's no if you want. Is there a time, time limit? I don't know. Your time limit? Um, is it your well, time limit? Is there? It's not ours. ours. We're not doing shit. Yeah, yeah we, we don't care. Just ask as many questions as you want. We basically got the cancer bats at two. Oh, oh fuck well, he's right bats. here. You guys can keep asking questions. <laughs> yeah, see, no <laughs> rush. He's trust me. <laughs> All right, dude. Any of you guys have any side projects or stuff that you're doing now? I have a band called Cock Punch. I've been doing it for a couple of years now. You're in that band. I'm in that band. <laughs> right now, uh, we haven't done anything for a while because I've been busy with this. But I'm gonna. My guitar, my bass player's at home writing right now, and our guitar player's on tour with us. So we're always collaborating. Um, and then I have about a thousand other bands I want to do that are probably just never going to happen. Because I'm just, everyone I know is lazy. <laughs> Kevin's too busy playing drums and jerking off. True. Jack's too busy oh, playing drums and jerking off. Drums and jerking off. Um, do you want to ask more about like tattoos since we're doing for a tattoo magazine? Do you guys have any like particular favorite tattoo? I like all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to play favorites. No, I like the... I just got the back of my neck done. Um, it took me a while to figure out what I wanted. Uh, and I finally did. I Basically, I just told my girlfriend, draw me a back of my neck tattoo, and she did. I gave her like three or four guidelines, and she just did. And she said, if you don't like it, I don't care. I'm still putting it on the back of your neck. And uh, that's probably... My favorite, because it just, she just did it without me, you know. And then the front of my neck's cool too, I like, I just got this done uh, uh, for my birthday in January. I just got it finished right before this tour, like I had one side left. Actually, I just got mine done, it took me a Sucks, while. doesn't it? Yeah. It's terrible, I, getting your throat tattooed. You don't like that? Yeah, yeah. Hours, and the dude's bearing down on your Adam's apple, and then you stand up and you pass out. Yeah, it's awesome. So, all the tattoos around my neck are great, I love them. And my hands too. I'm with Face Down here, and we're with two guys from the Acacia Strain. And you are? Kevin. And I'm Jack. And what do you guys do? I play drums. And I play the bass. Yeah. I had the pleasure of meeting these guys uh, when I was working for a magazine back at the Cool Tour in Houston. Uh, so I guess this is part two of our interview. Uh, what is the inspiration behind your band name? Is there a story behind the Acacia Strain? No, just that. Uh, we actually specifically don't answer that question in interviews so many, uh, just because we've had that so many times and if anybody looks at any interview, they can find the answer to that question. Um, that's just the thing we've been doing for like the past year now. Uh, not to sound like an asshole or anything. Yeah, no offense or anything, but that's like the number one question this band's been asked the most and it's like, it's out there everywhere. We can, yeah, we can talk more about how many times you've been asked that question. Okay, how many times have you been asked in the actual <laughs> band name itself? No, it's just the standard, you know, like everybody for years now. Yeah. That's like, yeah, no offense to you. Oh, no, no. no I'm taking it. Uh, now, you guys have been a band since 2001, and you guys went through such a, you know, you know uh, drastic band, you know, lineup. How hard was it going through that, and did you ever think that you would get to where you are now? Um, I mean, I'm the second drummer in the band. I joined the band in 2004. Jackie joined in 2006. Yep. Um, Jack was like probably our eighth bass player. player. Eight bass player. Like wow. eight. Just exaggerating, but there were so many bass players in this band. Um, but uh, yeah, I think the biggest hit was you know, DL not being able to like tour with us really. He's still able to write and everything, but touring is something he hasn't been able to do because he's at home taking care of his kid. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, other than that, everything's pretty smooth. We got two dudes filling in; they're doing a great job. So. Excellent. Now, you guys just released a uh, DVD, the the most known unknown yep. last year. Yeah. Uh, what was where did that idea come from? 
uh, our label just really wanted us to do a DVD, and we were trying to figure places to do it, and no better place than the Worcester Palladium. Yeah. It's pretty much like a hometown show for us. Um, sold the place out. It was probably the best show this band's ever played. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they just wanted us to do a DVD, and we were, we were down to do it, and it turned out awesome. Yeah. Market prosthetic is pretty rad. Oh, yeah. And uh, now your current album, Wormwood, uh, what was the inspiration behind that one? Just want to make something heavier than that was the last thing. Um, yeah, because it's definitely a lot heavier. That's kind of the goal with that. Drop the tuning down. In string guitars. Now, uh, I see that for 2011, it was announced you guys will be playing the entire Vans Warp Tour. How did that come about, and is this your first Warp Tour? largest uh, venue that you guys played? Yeah, this is the uh, first one we've ever done. Um, it's going to be cool. It'll be interesting. Uh, we've been trying to do it for a little while now, and this year just worked out. Um, yeah, so tours like that, like Mayhem, are just kind of like a lottery. It's yeah. Like, there's a bunch of names so that have to pick out a certain amount. And then... But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We're looking forward to it. It should be uh, interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of kick-ass bands on the Warped Tour this year. It's not yeah. just all punk. It's, yeah. it's a variety now, yeah. which is good. Yeah. Really cool. And uh, last year, you also released a video for The Hills Have Eyes. Uh, who came up with the idea behind that video? Was it based off of the movie? Um, no, it was actually Vincent's idea, and it's yeah. based off the show To Catch, to catch a Predator. Predator on Dateline. It's just Chris Hansen sits in a room, and like these dudes will catch dudes talking to like, girls that are, people that are trying to pose with your 15-year-old girls, and then the dudes come, and then... Chris Hansen walks out, makes him have a seat, and then he talks to him and makes him feel like shit. And then they leave the house and cops come. So we did that, and then we're all playing in a prison yard after we go to jail. <laughs> now, how did it come about you guys getting signed to Prosthetic Records? Um, I actually have a 